Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me for this week's episode of When I Grow Up. On today's episode, it's my pleasure to welcome my friend Kevin Chung, who really needs no introduction. <laughs> hey Casey, how are you? Hi, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you so much for joining me. For sure, for sure. Um, right before... I've been waiting since you started. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so flattered, but like also so embarrassed because like I was just telling Kevin that like, um, yeah, I was so I mean, actually, you're not the only person I've done this to. Like, you know, a lot uh, of the creatives like John yeah, Song, yeah. you mm, know, yeah, 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 like Jennifer Chung. Right. Mm-hmm. Like these are all people in our community. Right. But mm. then I don't know why. And you too. I'm like <laughs> so intimidated to even oh, <laughs> approach I don't I know it sounds it kind of sounds silly when I say it out loud <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. um yes thank you for saying yes <laughs> thank you for saying yes Kevin of course of course of course <laughs> um well um right before we started recording I asked Kevin like what should your title be like when I grow up I want to be an artist and you were just starting to tell me what you yeah. thought so yeah what do you yeah. think um I think right now, everything is so new, right? That it's hard to kind of put a, like a distinct label on it. Just like such a transition period. Um, I I would say maybe, I I think artist would work. Yeah. 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 Artist or singer songwriter. I don't, I don't even know. Yeah. 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 One of those, but but yeah. I feel like a lot, honestly, like a lot of young kids would be like, I want I just want to be famous. Like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> when i grow up i want to be famous um, we could do that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh, um okay so i'm excited to dig in a little bit mm, because yeah. like i don't know any of this life for you you know i yeah. just know pre-famous <laughs> kevin <laughs> y'all oh, i'm just ma- i'm just like teasing <laughs> a little bit right now um but uh yeah i mean like let's go back Mm. to the beginning i do want to hear about like you know your day-to-day and stuff yeah yeah it's been like um you moving out to la for those of you that don't know if you're living under a rock (laughs) kevin (laughs) kevin um is a artist singer songwriter uh, writes his own music um it's been really cool to see his journey kind of unfold Mm. he used to live in atlanta were you born here I was born and raised in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, born and raised here, and then recently moved to LA. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're gonna hear more about that today. But yeah, Kevin, like, when did this desire to do music start for you? Yeah, I think if I were to give, if I were to give this title like a year ago, I think it'd be when I grow up, I want to be a worship leader. Mm. Yeah, that was like the big like desire for me Mm -hmm. you know but I think it was like eighth grade when I started like seeing at the church for worship team and things like that and I think back then it was just like I didn't know I I, like knew what I was doing but I didn't know why you know what I mean so it's like you you kind of go to church you do what's kind of like not popular but like you know everyone was serving and like the way to way to build community and the way to like make friends at church was by serving and being involved and showing up more and I think my way of like being involved was through music and through worship and very much like so new to it like I was super shaky and super nervous and like you know where everyone starts like when they start something new um but yeah I think from there I just loved serving I loved doing worship music that's all I ever listened to and things like that um and then it wasn't until like post high school when I got into college and you know you start to like see more of the options sure and and I think that's when I think during that time was when the the singing competitions were really big like you know k-pop star and like superstar k and stuff like that so um you know with releasing things on YouTube, like these writers, like find you and and whatnot. So I was contacted and, you know, Hey, we want you to try out. Like I didn't make it a couple of times. Like I auditioned multiple times and, uh, and then I like finally made it. Uh, and that's that whole journey, that whole process of like just doing the show, even like even getting to be a part of that kind of 
opened up this desire in my heart to like, oh, what would like just pop music look like? Like not worship, not any of that. Like what would pop music look like? And I think that was sophomore year of college. And I think at the time I was just really afraid and like not confident because it was like, I don't know how to do this. Mm. Like this whole pop music thing. I don't know how to write. Like I've never written a song. All I've done was like covers and stuff. Yeah. I don't know how to write a song. I don't know how to produce. I don't know how to do all these things. Like so many questions. Um, and then, you know, year by year, like people come that came into my life that I learned from and people that are willing to like pour into me came and, and stuff like that. So just every year I learned little by little, like how to do this music thing. Yeah. And like, I think the desire was always there, but it was always like clouded by a sense of fear and a sense of like unknown and like the possibility of failure and like looking at a path that I've never seen anyone do uh, personally. You know what I mean? Like yeah. someone who navigates. At the time, I think I was juggling between like, do I pursue worship leading or do I pursue like this pop music stuff? Like right. what, what do I do? And I had never seen anyone do both. Um, that was like near me. Um, so there was just a lot of questions and a lot of things like that, but I think that was like the birth of it. Yeah. But more than like a single day or a single moment, it really was just like seven, eight years of just like building confidence and like right. really trying my hardest to believe in myself and believe like, oh, this is possible. You know what I mean? No, I totally know. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. And you know, that fear aspect is so um, prevalent in like in my life and a lot of mm -hmm. people's lives um just and you know i've said this before on the podcast but my hope for this podcast is to eliminate try to eliminate some of that fear yeah, yeah. like of the unknown right because mm -hmm. like if we're talking about it if you seeing people that have been there and are doing it and experiencing mm -hmm. it you can kind of be like oh hey it's not it's not that scary and mm -hmm. I, so i love that you brought that up because yeah, yeah, yeah. i would agree with you like especially around uh georgia and atlanta mm -hmm. our community like yeah i don't think we do see a lot of um i mean i feel like atlanta is evolving that for sure mm -hmm. but like we we don't see a lot of like coexisting like being a christian right mm -hmm. and then being a part of like the pop uh, music scene or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. You, what you what, whatever you said sorry honestly i don't, <laughs> but, um, I don't even know either yeah <laughs> um and like um yeah, and I so I I get what you're saying, having to go through that journey yeah. to kind of figure it out, mm -hmm. and even like, I'm sure people were like, Kevin, what are you doing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Sometimes. Um, yeah. Uh, but I, if you don't mind, I want to rewind to kind mm -hmm. of even your experience on the singing contest because honestly, for me, <laughs> like I think that's the time I met you, like around uh -huh. that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I remember the our mutual friend telling me like oh yeah like he's on superstar is it superstar k <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 everyone go look it up right now mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um no but it was so cool it was so cool because like mm. david and i were really into watching those mm. things at the time when it was first yeah. popular and um it's really cool to see you on you have to like make it through a lot of rounds right yeah there's a couple pre-rounds before you get to the actual show so were yeah. you scared then? Like, like nervous? No, I mean, oh yeah. I mean, so, well, this particular audition that I made mm -hmm. was very much a, like the attitude I was going in with was like, they didn't take me like the past few times. I'm just going to like, they want, they, there was a, it was a more persistent vibe this time of I like, see. they really wanted me to like uh, audition. And I would, I would give them things where I was like, oh, I'm busy. You know, like I, I did that because I was nervous and I did that because I didn't believe in myself. But interesting. Yeah. So like it was very much like a like a very in defense mechanism. I think that's the best way to, to put like it. Like I was yourself. Just, yeah. I was like, hey, I got this like church thing. So I can't come to that like first thing. Like I'm that's my pri priority. And like oh. it, it was I, I know like it can get misunderstood as like, oh, I'm too good for this. But it really was more of like an insecurity of like, I don't think I'm good enough for this. So let me try to find ways out. <gasps> That's you know? really fascinating for yeah, me. I never yeah. thought that about you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know you that well, but uh, uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
And then, so pretty much like I went in and they told me all I needed to do was prepare like one song in English and one Mm -hmm. song in Korean. Mm -hmm. So that's like all I did. Mm -hmm. But if there's anyone getting ready for an audition, like have like four or five songs. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Noted. So so during this time, like all I knew was Christian music. Mm -hmm. Like that's it. And I went in with two like non-christian songs and like that's all i knew and they kept asking for more so like i kept singing and kept singing finally like i'm on the fifth song and i'm like i have nothing but christian music now (laughs) so i remember singing like how great is our god because that was literally the only in pocket song i had yeah (laughs) Okay, I mean, I think that's great. Yeah. But what to what happened after that? So then after that, I felt so deflated because I was like, I literally sang "How Great Is Our God" for <laughs> for for a Korean singing audition. Like I felt right. so embarrassed, right? Because I was like, right. ah man, like th- I'm not gonna make it. Like whatever. So I just like moved on. And then a couple months later, they gave me a call and they're like, Hey, we're only picking three, and we want you to like fly out. Um, and here's the crazy part. So that I, I made it and I was like really happy. But then now it just opened up a can of worms that like I, I didn't know how to like, like cope with. Like there's mm-hmm. just so much more pressure now and so much more fear. And like in my head, I was like, oh, I have, I have to think about being on TV and I have to like all this stuff. So then I would dish out more reasons why I couldn't go to Korea, which is crazy. Cause like, that's all I ever like dreamed of when I was like, auditioning and getting ready for these things wow yeah so then how old were you i was i think i was 19 oh man yeah so young yeah 19 and trying to like navigate like right all that was so crazy and then they were like you know what we'll make a it pretty much they were like you don't have to come early like just come like later because i was leading a retreat like worship for a retreat so I was like I want to do this like this is what I want to do yeah um and it conflicted with the times and they were like we'll work with you like just like do your thing and then fly out after and then they kind of like did stuff for me to like get there early or get there on time for all this stuff wow um yeah I mean it was like very nice but to me it was still very like daunting I was like Mm. I don't I don't know Mm. if I want to do this like I like I'm freaking out like and I just didn't know how to like like two things I didn't know myself I think as an artist but also I didn't know myself as a person so like I, I didn't know how to like I mean, navigate you were 19. All that. yeah yeah just got like just in college like didn't even know like my pathway was business I was like I'll, I'll just do business because that's mm. like what I think is right yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> yeah. but pretty much when made another round before the tv round and then got on the tv round made that one and then got dropped the next one so it was like pretty quick right right. but um so the way that i put it is like i went farther than i thought but then once i got there i didn't get as far as i wanted to right yeah because you like it but i didn't realize it took like literally all of you to get to korea yeah and then you you finally go because you decide, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah. And then you only go through one round mm-hmm. on TV. Oh, man. Yeah. It's like a mental, like, battle yeah. like, the entire time. Yeah, for sure. So what did you take away from that experience, though? <laughs> yeah. Um, this is probably the number one thing that I took away from it. Um, as I was surrounded by all these creatives, right? Mm. Like, in Georgia, I was at... I was serving at a church and I was like one of the only male vocalists. Um, And, you know, it's kind of like a, like a fish in a small pond, right? Yeah. You feel like a big fish in a small pond. And then I flew out to Korea and I feel like the smallest fish. Sure. Yeah. Like there's guys that I got to meet that I watched on YouTube growing up. Mm -hmm. Like I'm competing against them. Right. Yeah. And in my mind and in my perspective, like, I felt so small and I was like, there's no way that I'm like going to beat these guys out, you know? Yeah. So like, but as I got to know them, I realized like, you know, the competition thing with music is so like, ah, I'm not a fan of it. Mm. Um, But these guys just really loved music and they loved writing. They loved expressing and they loved all this stuff. 
And when I looked at that, I was like, they have something that I'm missing. Mm -hmm. And like, as I was processing through that, I was like, you know what? I need to like, or I came to terms with the fact that like, I am very much more interested in what this creative thing brings me rather than the art and the craft itself. Yeah. So I was like, man, I, I want fame. I want to be noticed. I want like, you know, everything that comes with it, Mm -hmm. all the accolade and all this and that. And like, I think that trip very much exposed that in me. And what I realized was if that is my end game, I will be very like dissatisfied because it's so up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And like, you know, trends fade and like people kind of like fall off their popularity and things like that. And if that's everything to you, then it's like, like I already felt it in that moment. Like I'm going to be so depressed. Mm -hmm. So then my takeaway, biggest takeaway was, man, how do I fall in love with just the craft of this? Like, how do I fall in love with just writing music and like expressing and like all that goes into it and like really just love it. Like finding the purity of the craft. Yeah, no, that, that's yeah. amazing. Like, yeah. the, what a huge growing yeah, time yeah. for you. Mm. Um, I mean, and, you know, this is, man, this is so good. Because I <laughs> feel like that's so relatable, mm. right? Um, I know people are going to, like, come at me for this. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, like, if I'm honest, right, in mm. the world yeah. that we live in today, Um, that is what a lot of people are living for right Mm, like yeah the next viral video right um and and i think that if you don't find your center like Mm -hmm. it's going to yeah you're gonna be discontent yeah most of your life and 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 anxiety and like you feel like you're not enough all the mm, time yeah so so okay like i have to know so (laughs) i what did, did you start right away like how can i start falling in love with music or did it take you some time oh yeah i think i'm still like i'm like aware of it now but i'm still like battling that you know Mm. and i think that's just i've realized like oh that's like just a part of my like my wiring i guess yeah to desire those things Mm -hmm. you know and and i i don't think those things are like necessarily bad right but i think back then this was like seven years ago like that was that was like my everything yeah. you know yeah. and and it was it was so hard because I think with my faith I I felt like I felt so wrong to admit it you know so I, I think a lot of people will, will come across that like tension of like I feel this but I feel like if I admit it I'm a bad person you know yes. and there's like I felt so much shame and like guilt to like even like recognize that that was an issue mm-hmm. but I think the moment I was able to say like this is true about me but I want to change yeah and I want to change that yeah I think that's when I felt a lot more like liberation and like the courage to like step out like like own it in a sense but mm-hmm. like not own it so much that it's my everything right right you know yeah okay so like I wanted to ask you about this right because you know like um you said if I'd asked you this a year ago, mm-hmm. the title may have been "When I grow up, I want to be a worship leader, a worship yeah. pastor, right?" Um, and like you know, as someone that's in ministry, yeah. and you know, David does worship too. Like there mm-hmm. is always this like line I feel mm-hmm. like um, between like wh- when is it too much? Like when mm-hmm. is it like about me and not about God? Yeah. Right. And then, like, you love music and you want to be a light in the world. Mm-hmm. However, there is a there is this, you know, like yeah, yeah. It's about I'm selling me. I'm selling myself. Yeah. yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. So how like, do you get what I'm asking you right mm-hmm. now? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't is, know the I don't know yeah. the right words to ask you. Yeah. But I guess what I'm asking is, how do you feel about that? Mm-hmm. And. I'm assuming you must have had like mentors or something that have yeah, talked yeah, to you yeah. about it and you've had questions about because I you know mm-hmm. I know your character Kevin and I know that you're a great guy you've led worship with David before and so and I know you love the Lord right mm. but like there is this like <laughs> for me um, and I listen I'm not talking about you just in general yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. like um 
Yeah. What? I think I get what you're trying to ask. I don't even know the words. How yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, how do you pursue an art that is so much about your own kingdom and your own like elevation of followers of like all these things yes. and all that, while still maintaining like, I don't know, the integrity to the faith of like, man, it's about the Lord's kingdom and stuff like that. Yes. Right. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I've wrestled with this like, like towards the end of my time at you know, where I was leading worship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, sh I struggled with this so much. And I told myself, if I can't find like an adequate answer to this, like I can't in integrity, like pursue this. Okay. Yeah. So then I think what's really cool and what I, as I was like, you know, like looking through when I grow up and stuff like that, mm -hmm, like your, mm -hmm. your podcast and like what it's about, I think what I love about it and what I got, like the information that I got from my old church was how do you empower those that are in like other work that's not, what's it called? Ministry. Yes. You know, work outside of ministry. How do you empower those people to know that they have just as much of a role in ministering people and reaching people as um the, the pastors yes. worship leaders and things like that and and that's that's something that I was like I feel like there's got to be artists and there's got to be musicians that love the Lord you know you, you we have to be able to empower that mm. you know and and a part of me was like I feel like there is a role and um duty I don't know like a role and a duty to like open myself up to that arena of people because a part of me felt like I, i'm just surrounded by other christians sure yeah um i'm hearing the message of like share the gospel love people love the lord all this and that but it's like i feel like i'm not with those that need jesus mm -hmm. right and those that um may want jesus but mm -hmm. don't really know mm -hmm. um so I, that was kind of like the empowering thing of like how do i make this my like soul focus as i pursue like this art yeah you know what I mean yeah. and I and I think even with with a platform and with all that I think it's reminding myself every day like it's not about the numbers and it's not about like clout and all this and that and I think once like things started to grow for me I realized how empty it is you know and and a part of me was like oh shoot like once you hit a number you make a new number and then a new number and then yeah. a new one yeah and then once you hit all these goals and it's just like the cycle and it's like that reminder for me of like how do i stay satisfied now if jesus is really everything like how do i live as if i already have everything rather than like chasing after Ooh, yeah. you know the next the next and the next you know yeah no yeah. that's good that's good yeah I'm so i feel like it's the person <laughs> yeah what was that i said i'm satisfied with that answer <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah yeah were you gonna say something else um, I think of, to add on to that, I'm yeah. still learning. Mm. Yeah. Like I, I feel like I haven't navigated it yet, but I do think there is something really important about that, that yeah. I'm still like trying to find. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I appreciate your transparency through all of this, Kevin. For sure. I really do. Um, like, and I, and I, mm, I guess for me, like sometimes it's hard to watch when I feel like it's, it's not doing what you're what you're talking about right mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. when i watch artists who i know are christian right mm -hmm. but yet kind of cross that line yeah, into yeah, yeah. what i feel like is not a good representation of who mm -hmm. jesus is and so yeah, yeah, yeah. um i think that's why i i wanted to ask because it's like you know then then what is the point right right you right know? so um yeah. yeah again i really appreciate what you said I, and it's I, hard it's so yeah. hard no yeah in anything, in anything, it's hard, right? Like yeah. I'm in children's ministry, and I'm telling my kids, like, look, it just gets harder as you grow mm -hmm. older. You know, yeah. you need to be bold now. And, mm -hmm. um, but yes, um, so I have so many questions. <laughs> I, you know, I was gonna like go on social media and be like, hey, I'm interviewing Casey Kevin <laughs> Chung. Like, if you have questions, but then I felt like I was gonna flood in, so I didn't. <laughs> um. But my question is, um, I guess when did 
things take off for you like online? Like when mm. did you like what was there like a video or something that happened that <laughs> like or I don't yeah. I, I mean, yes, but I think it was like through time, oh, right? Yes. But I'll I'll okay. Let me see. How do I share this? Okay, so I feel like <laughs> the thing about social media, uh-huh. it makes you seem. Bigger than you are, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, just to take you to answer your your question, uh-huh. um, it was during the pandemic uh-huh. where, you know, I think a lot of us like jumped on TikTok, like yeah, as or made a podcast, or yeah, made a podcast, agreed. or you know, you know, things like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think all all of us were like trying to find ways to, I don't know, like use our time yeah. <laughs> throughout like a really tough tough time. And for me, it was like. Man, I have all this time. I can't be at work. Um, I have my time for my music, and what I always struggled with, with was consistency. Mm. Like I posted a YouTube video here, and then like four months later, I posted like a little clip. You know, and it just wasn't consistent. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when I jumped on TikTok, I <laughs> I like tried the dancing thing, and I was like, no, this. <laughs> <laughs> this will not work. This is not for me. You know, like just trying to hop on trends yeah, and things yeah. like that. But then I was like, let me stay true to like what I like and what I want to do. And it's music. So let me just post a cover a day. Like that's mm. all. That's my goal. Like I don't care about getting a viral video. I don't care about anything. Like I didn't even know how to do that. Like mm. all I want to do was post a video a day and like build consistency and mm-hmm. build that in my character. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was singing, 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 singing. And then, you know, it was okay. I was kind of growing and things like that. Um, And then I was around like 6K followers. And then I posted like a really dumb, like funny, like transition video at like a cafe. Oh, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah. And that one, for some reason, I made that in five minutes. Blew up. It was like like, behind the scenes of the transition. Yeah, yeah. It's like what you see creators do and things like that. Yeah, yeah. But that blew up and it, it's like, I think it's close to like four, four million like what? views. Yeah, close, close around there. Like, is it and, okay? Just for a second, isn't mm-hmm. that crazy that yeah. four million people wanted yeah. to watch this video? It was insane. I was like, I don't understand why. <laughs> like, there's just no reason for it. And a part of me was like, well, how is that going to go viral? And like, none of my <laughs> singing, you know, like, <laughs> you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then that really like flooded all the people in and they saw all my music. And then that's when like things started to grow. And I was like, oh, shoot, this is great. Let me just keep going. And then for the rest of 2020 and into 2021, it was just all in. Mm -hmm. And then I started to kind of figure out like, oh, there is kind of an algorithm and a system to this. Um, There's certain videos that I do that do well. So let me push those out. And it was a lot of trial and error. But I had never been in a place where I was pumping out that much content, you know, like I had the time for it. I had like the desire for it, like the drive, like everything was aligning. And I was just like pushing it out and trying all these different things. And pretty much like from 6K grew to like 200K within like a year. And it's like, oh, wow. Like these are numbers that I've never seen Mm -hmm. with my name on it, you know? Yeah. Um, But I think that's what I was trying to get at in the beginning. It's like, but I'm still the same person. Yes. You know, so it's like, oh, now there's this pressure and it feels like this may not be the truth, but it feels like all these eyes are on me. And now you've developed like this. I think it's unhealthy, like an unhealthy performance mentality sure. where you always feel like you have to be performing at a high level. Um, and there's no room for like, I don't know, messing up or like not being on top of it and, and things like that. Um, so then, you know, I like kind of digressed, but yeah, that's kind of how it all started. I see. (laughs) I mean, like, okay. So, you know, you, by the way, amazing, like the content pushing out too. Mm. I mean, obviously I'm, I, the podcast itself, I do the bare minimum. I literally (laughs) just show up for the interview and David does all the editing and then like all that stuff. But, um, even like social media, right? Like with two kids and just a day I Mm. like I David's like did you post yet no I didn't post like (laughs) like 
Like I know that I need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I'm again doing the bare minimum for this platform. Mm-hmm. Yet I'm so grateful that you guys listen, anyways. But <laughs> um, what I'm trying to get at is that I know content creating uh-huh. is like doesn't just happen in yeah. ten minutes, right? right Even right. me posting one post, I'm like, yeah, okay, like, what do I write <laughs> here? And um, but uh. I'm sure you've gotten to a system with it, but in the beginning, like how long would it take you to like create one video to push out? Yeah, yeah. So back then, oh man, I think it was like anywhere from three to six hours. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Just like, but but I was doing the most. Like I was being so extra with my (laughs) videos and like adding text and like trying to get the audio quality. But but I did all that because. I just wanted to practice like my craft. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I would like produce out things and like, you know, add things. And I was like, I just want to keep my chops going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was way too much. I feel like I could have made more in that time. No, but I think that's really <laughs> cool. And I, and honestly, I think it's um, good to hear it out loud mm, because yeah. um, I think I watch some of these videos and think, man, like, um, looks mm. so easy. <laughs> <laughs> I could do that, but I can't. I can't. So, like, even at you adding text, I'm like, God, why is it taking me so long yeah, to do yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. So, um, these days, how long does it take you then? It like same. I, I aim for like two hours. Oh, two hours. Yeah, yeah. Good. Two hours. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't have time. I don't have the time anymore. Right, right. Uh, but it's tough. Like nowadays, I'm struggling between like. Do I post or do I write? Mm. Do I um, like stream? Like that's a new thing that yes. I, that I've been doing I've lately. Heard. Yeah. I'm- so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's just a lot. There's a lot. Okay. Like what? Okay. Let's talk about this streaming <laughs> thing. Okay. I'm sure everyone yeah. else knows but me and uh-huh. I should know. But okay. So when... I've seen you post like, oh, like join me on this stream, yeah, or something. And mm-hmm. then, um, what happens? Like, yeah, I mean, it feels like I didn't understand it at first either. Okay, and I, I stream on Twitch now. I used Twitch. to stream on TikTok, um, and Instagram and things like that, but I switched over to Twitch. Um, it's very, it's odd. Like, cause it's such a big gaming platform. Yes. So in a lot of ways, it's a lot of people watching other people playing games. Okay. You know, I know so, this about Twitch. So there's, yeah, there's, there's that world, but there's also like just chatting, which is like interacting with like the creators that you enjoy <gasps> hanging out with or watching. And it's cool. I mean, it feels like, it feels like a podcast in a sense, but in real time and live. Um, and then there's a music category where a lot of musicians will like, do cover songs, perform their own songs, take requests from people. So it's very interactive. And uh, I think the Twitch community is very like uh, generous. Uh-huh. So there's there's just a lot more like support that comes in on Twitch compared to like TikTok. For I feel, yeah, I feel, I feel like each social media platform has its pros and cons. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm going to sound like an idiot. But no, so it's like- okay, it's okay. So, like, you're there and then, like, people are, like, joining the conversation? Yeah. So, there's, like, a chat. So, it it kind of looks like a window like this. Uh-huh. And I have my guitar and I'm playing uh-huh. and things like that. Uh-huh. And then there's a chat uh-huh. that they're just, like, inputting, like, hey, can you sing this one? Or, like, oh, my, like, my day was this. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, my day was this. And, you know, and you just, like, interact with people. And it feels closer. Yeah, yeah. It feels more personal. Um, and I think that's why a lot of people enjoy it. Um especially during the pandemic i think it was way bigger during the pandemic where you were just looking to like connect with people and like interact and you know wow that's really cool yeah okay (laughs) does it feel weird sometimes though that like all these people are coming to listen to you sing uh yeah a little bit (laughs) but i mean like how cool is that it is it is really cool it is but what i realized as well is like throughout all this and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about like it could very much I could very much easily make it like all about me Mm. and I feel like sometimes you can fall into that trap of like oh these people are like here for me and they're giving for me and things like that but I think what I love most about the twitch streams is that like I feel like genuine friendships have like been birthed (gasps) simply because they met in my stream wow 
you know and it's like you know if you know discord you, you can like send people there to like interact and stuff and you you just see like people interacting online and like sharing about life and it's like you realize like oh man like in a sense you're not leading but like it's a community that you're like kind of building and I, I think that's what I find most enjoyable and mm-hmm. something that I learned like oh this is kind of like a way to bring people together and help them feel like there's a common like something that connects them to someone yeah, else yeah, yeah. you know uh, and I think that's super cool like that's like so much cooler than like oh shoot I got a viral video yeah, <laughs> you know because yeah. that'll like fade yeah that's really neat. Yeah, yeah. That's a really cool platform. I mm. love that. Um, yeah. So, Kevin, why um, did you move to LA? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's twofold. Uh-huh. Um, a part of me felt like it was time for change. Uh huh. Um, like I wanted to be in a new city, and I've always dreamed of living somewhere else. Uh huh. Because Georgia is all I knew, and yeah. and things like that, and then. The other aspect was like, how do I give this music thing like a real go, Mm -hmm. like a real try and like, you know, not like how I was during Superstar K where I'm like a little bit like, you know, come off like it's not a big deal. But Mm -hmm. in reality, I'm just scared Mm -hmm. and I'm afraid and and things like that. Like, how do I really take a risk and be out there and just like say like I don't know what's gonna happen and I have no idea how this plays out but I'm just gonna try my best yeah you know so it's it was those two things and I was like I feel like LA has both a city I want to be in a city that I'm growing to love and a big music scene just yeah, a lot of it, creatives that no, I for from. sure for sure yeah. I feel like you know my parents live out in in Orange County and mm-hmm. um, I went to college in Orange County too and so I feel like in in many ways, like Georgia is behind, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like culturally in some sense of like the creative scene. I feel like yeah. we're years, like two, three years behind all, all the time mm-hmm. trying to catch up. Um, So I think it's awesome that you're out there. But like when you decided to move out there, like is there, was there opportunity um mm-hmm. in place for you or was it just kind of like I'm going? Yeah. So there was, there was a label that I was talking with um, and it was kind of like they found me through TikTok and they're like yo like this is what we're about like we would love to like start the conversation of what it would look like for you to be signed under us and I was like oh shoot like that's crazy like Mm -hmm. I never like I never thought that would be like a thing or possible or whatever Um, so then like my manager like took calls and like things were growing they had like a big interest for me uh, really believed in me and like wanted to pretty much like do I can't really I I don't think I can talk about the terms of it but just like you know work together in a sense um so then I was working on like a five song EP um that's coming out at the end of the month but I like finished it and as I was like preparing to move and stuff like this was kind of like oh like I'll be in LA I have a label like I'll be making music and I'll be doing whatever like I have all this set, right? And then as I was like, like leaving to go, I get a call from my manager and she was just like, hey, so like, you know, things have changed and, you know, like, you know, pretty much like there's internal issues and like, we're not going to sign. Oh, and I was like, oh, snap. Like <laughs> now I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, a part of me was like, maybe you know, on the bright side, I feel like there's something beautiful about being an independent artist. Like you don't have to like get someone's approval. You don't have to like whatever you can just like grow. And I feel like in a sense, like a part of me felt like there was more to grow on my own anyways. So in a sense, it was like, okay, that's fine. But obviously there was disappointment and like, it was kind of like a curveball of like, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to navigate the music industry anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what my next move is and things like that. So very much like, oh, shoot, like, what do I do? Mm. Um, and I think now I'm like figuring that out. Yeah. Like I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, you're in it. Yeah, yeah very much Man, in that's it. that's crazy though. Yeah, yeah. 
and disappointing. But、yeah. I get what you're saying, like about being an independent artist. I'm sure、mm. you would have had to answer to a lot of things. Yeah, and, yeah. Um. Uh. Well, what does your day to day look like then? Like, yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Um. I'm actually a barista too. <laughs>、nice. Yes, that's so, good to know because I'm like, yeah, how yeah. are you living out there? <laughs> <Yeah> . So <laughs> I work at a a cafe on Sunset Boulevard. Oh man,、yeah, you like, really live in that LA life. Yeah, <laughs> that's like where all the creatives go. So I was like,、yeah. oh, this is great. <laughs>、uh, it very much feels like a、um, like a common story for a lot of creatives out here. You know, you work on Sunset, like <laughs> get, get a service job, and you just play shows at night. You know, things like that. <laughs> Um, so it's fun. It's fun, but I feel like you don't hear that in Georgia.、Mm. Not many people. Well, maybe I just haven't met. Them. No, no, you don't hear that, <laughs> <laughs> especially in the Asian community. Right, you know? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as as much as it's like harder than I think my life before, like I am, I'm like really enjoying it because、mm. I feel like a little bit of that struggle is like really good. Like I feel like the way I grew up was very, like I was very fortunate to like have a good family and like. You know, had a lot of things, and what's the word? Like privilege in a lot yes, of ways. Yes.、Um, so it's it feels good to struggle,、sure. you know. And and I think even being able to say that, it's like, oh, that's privilege in and of itself. It is. Yeah, yeah. it really yeah, is. So like,、sure. I, I think this is all for like just my growth and perspective、mm-hmm. and as a person and, and things like that. So, so you、um, work during the day as a、mm-hmm. barista, and then when do you have time to do music in the evenings? Yeah, so every evening, and then I only work like four out of the seven days. Okay.、Um, uh, some days I try to rest the best as possible, and then Monday through Saturday, usually in the evenings. Yeah. Um. And so, are you writing songs right now? Hmm. Yeah. So trying to <laughs> trying to get some songs out. I think my goal for the year is to have a song out every month. Um, wow, so,、yeah. that's really awesome.、Yeah. When? How do you get started? Like, what? Are, okay, well, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> a lot of your songs、uh-huh. um, are about relationships and girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on! You knew it was coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, for sure, for there's, sure. For there's, sure. I forget the name of the song now. No, we、so、have、sorry. to go. go to no, but no. What I was gonna say was, there's one song that David like used to listen to on repeat. Oh, okay, okay, like, okay. Like that he loves so much.、Uh-huh, I forget、uh-huh. the name of the song. Uh huh. But anyways, um, <laughs> um, yeah. So like, I listen to it. I'm like, oh man, these are like. <laughs> <laughs> These words are like seem so real. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Are they real? No, I'm. I'm not gonna.、Um, I'm not going to、uh, share that <laughs> deeply about my songs. They, they, to, they you just have to, to. You just have to take it for what it is. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay.、Um, so, like, when you start writing, though,、uh-huh. like, do you do you draw from life experience? You know, you know, I I think definitely. So there's a lot of different type of writers, right? Like there's some writers that like just know the story and they like、mm. lyrics are everything, you know, and they every word is you know what they like. I don't know, take the most time in, I guess.、Mm-hmm. For me, I think I focus on the feeling, right?、Oh. It's like, oh, I have this feeling. How do I bring like the words around it, and how do I like? Put the music around it, and I I want people to feel like the emotion I felt in a sense. Bro, I feel it sometimes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, man, I wish I should have studied before talking to you. But、um, like, there's one song I looked at David, and I was like, Oh my god, this is like yeah, yeah, me. Yeah. This is yeah, me yeah. in high school. <laughs> I felt like this. Yeah, yeah. How did yeah. he do that?、So、yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I re-、oh. it, so like the lyrics to me like they matter,、um, and I'm very picky about the words that I use. But it's not as important to me as like the melody or the or the or the the instrumentation around it. Interesting. Yeah. So so I I think you know there nowadays you have producers that are songwriters too. So、uh-huh. you it's just like there's no rules. That's what I realized too. I felt like there there had to be a specific system that I had to follow. But this is just what worked for me. Yeah. And how did you like find figure that out? Just more practice. Just like working with people.、Uh, yeah. Nowadays, like you could just DM a producer、mm-hmm. um, and see if they want to work. Really. Yeah. Like that's how easy it is. Like 
and even on TikTok, right? There's so many producers that post beats and they're like, someone duet me and write your own song to it. Um, and it's just a way to practice, you know, yeah, if you yeah. want to practice writing and like performing and things like that. But sometimes like there's a lot of cases on TikTok where someone's just duetted and the producer loved it and they're like, let's do it. <gasps> yeah, let's do this song and then they wow, post it up. so easy. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> but not, obviously. But yeah, not. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it, if it were easy, everyone would do it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, mm. actually, I've heard this before. Like, I heard, mm. like, it's just as, like, business is done through Instagram is mm-hmm. what I heard. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Um. So, okay, so you're not going to talk about your songs? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fine. Okay, here's what I'll say. I definitely draw inspiration from life experiences. Mm -hmm. But after that initial inspiration, it's fair game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes uh, when I first started, I felt like the song and the story of the song had to be super true. I see. I see. Exactly true. And like, it's everything that happened in the relationship, I have to write like nonfiction or. Yeah, fiction. nonfiction. 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 I felt like I had to write nonfiction. Yes, yes. Not re- No, no, no. I had to write fiction. Like what fiction was- is not real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to write nonfiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, I got I, no, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, I, I feel you because I'm like, I feel like oh so maybe okay. So these songs, artists aren't always telling me the truth, right? That's what you're saying. I mean when you say it that way, it makes it sound bad. But no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, but I like what you're saying. So, like, the yeah. initial feeling is like mm-hmm. the inspiration right, that you right, draw right. from your life experience. But what you're saying is, when you write, it's not mm-hmm. necessarily yeah what happened to you. You're yeah. just like going with the fle- feeling and the flow. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's like, man, I, how do you capture this? How do you like tell a story mm-hmm. in a sense? And then as you go, you like remove. For me, I remove myself, and I'm like, if I keep attaching myself to it i'm going to pretty much box it up yeah and have parameters around it gotcha you know what i mean yeah, and i think no, no. so if i can get into this i i think that's what was hard for me personally about being a leader in the church and then having songs that didn't really reflect that mm. if that makes sense i don't think my songs are like too crazy like no, i'm not, not like Drop an f bomb, yeah. like you know, <laughs> singing about all these things. Yeah, yeah. But it 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 made me like self conscious a little bit, like especially right. like working with students that have access, and like the only people that really knew that I was on TikTok when I first started were my students. Mm. So I was like, man, like if there's like the littlest thing that does not represent like a church leader, mm-hmm. and and I think I was putting this on myself more so than like something that someone else was putting in mm-hmm. on me. So I, I think that goes back to another reason why I felt like, oh, it might be it might be the right time for me to like step away from vocational ministry. Uh, I think a lot of people think I'm like stepping away from the church, like moving to LA. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I'm I'm still at church and I'm still serving and things like that. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I I did not assume that at all. Okay, okay. I, I just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For I sure. see. No, that makes sense too. Mm. And you know, um, it's for me, it's really fascinating to hear you kind of describe more about your personality and who you are. Cause I actually relate to that a lot. Like mm. I I as a perfectionist, as a planner, all these things, right? Like I feel the need to stay in a this boxed way. Yeah, yeah. But like not just you, but other people that I've talked to on the podcast or have in my life. Honestly, having children is yeah, the yeah. best way to break out of any kind of perfectionism or box. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I think like it's so encouraging for me to hear you tell me like, yeah, like it's not it doesn't have to be one way, right? Mm, like, yeah, yeah. And that's what being a quote unquote creative is, right? Yeah, it doesn't have yeah. to be one way. Mm-hmm. Um, that's cool. Um, yeah. I was wondering also, um. Like, you're okay. So you're an independent artist now. Like, what is mm-hmm. what is the goal then? What is to be like for you? Like, is it to be financially mm-hmm. stable as an artist? Like, what? When yeah. have you 
made it? Yeah, yeah. You know, that is such a good question <laughs> that I ask myself every day. Mm. You know, I, as I'm like, honestly, it feels like I'm just like, I feel very aimless right now because that's a question that I'm still wrestling with. Because again, no amount of followers, I genuinely believe no amount of followers will ever make me feel like I've made it, mm. you know? And yeah, it's just hard. Like, and, and even, oh, getting signed. I don't, I don't think getting signed is all that it's, it seems either. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, that's tough. And I think at the end of the day, like, I just want, what I'm really fighting right now is like, how do I s- simply enjoy this like entire process? Mm. Cause I mean, I don't know what the future holds, you yeah. know, like I, this could all like flop or it could do really well. Like, but at the end of the day, like, did I enjoy how I got there? Did I make meaningful relationships and things like that? So like, it's hard because I'm trying to figure all that out yeah. as I'm here. But I think, I think at the end of the day, like if I was financially stable to do the art that I'm doing and to make music, solely from the music mm-hmm. i think that'd be a, a big win yeah yeah for yeah sure yeah um can i ask you how does <laughs> one in your position uh, make money from your music currently yeah so a big probably the biggest revenue for me is probably spotify mm. um spotify and streaming services and people just listening to my music like that is probably like the top right now for me um, I know in the music industry itself, um, doing tours and doing, uh, what's it called? Shows. Like, that's the way, you know, you probably make okay. the most there. And then obviously there's like another aspect of merch, you know, like oh, yes. artists selling merch and things like that. So those are all like revenue streams. Um, I don't know too many people that are solely like in music. Like okay. just their music supplies, everything. Like I think a lot of people jump on like, and this is another revenue. I think it's like Twitch, YouTube, uh, TikTok, like all these social media outlets that like pay you to be a creator. I see. So okay. so Twitch, Instagram. Oh, they pay you? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. So like with reels, like as you post reels, like I get money as a creator. Uh, <gasps> That's each awesome. month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's like, I mean, it's it's like it's enough for lunch. (laughs) Hey, you know, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. But you know, like the bigger creators, they obviously make more, but I think at my level, like, like Twitch is probably my number one social media outlet of where I make money. Uh Um, And then Instagram, if you're big on YouTube, which, which I'm not, YouTube is kind of hard for me, but yeah, that's another one. But but all these different ways. And I, I think that's where it's like cool, but also kind of daunting because it's like you can kind of pick and choose your lane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same time, it's hard to stay consistent with every single one. I see. I you see. know, yeah. so like um, the people that are asking you or like so Instagram, right? Like you're getting mm-hmm. paid for that. Like, I'm just curious, like, do you ask for their sponsorship or they ask you or how does that work yeah so i i think reels is a new thing Uh and i don't know too much and it just kind of like started i think you have to switch to like a creator account or something Uh like that uh but it's it's called bonuses so like as you post uh reels every i think it's every view that you get you get a certain portion and there's like a limit of how much you can make but Uh like there's a maximum okay yeah but every month you can it recycles and you just like keep posting the more you post the more views you get the more money comes in (laughs) that's crazy yeah man what a time we live in that's yeah it's it's insane (laughs) like i don't think i think the way to like get promotional things out is to reach out to creators with big platforms Mm -hmm. and have them like i don't know promote your stuff (laughs) gotcha gotcha yeah all right, man. So I feel like, um, did I, did, was there something that you wanted to talk about that maybe I haven't asked you about yet? Mm, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like oh, we covered a lot, but we have, but I yeah. did think of something. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, what about like your parents? What do they feel? Yeah. Do yeah. 
about it? Oh, yeah. Um, it's really cool, though. Like, I was thinking about this, too, before I got on. Um, I feel like I was very fortunate to have parents that never really, like, pushed me to be, like, academically, like, you know, you like gotta a, do it. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. my mom, she I grew up watching her do like art shows. So she's an artist herself. And oh, wow. she did a lot of painting stuff. And she did a lot of like digital art. Um, and then from there, she moved to like baking cakes and designing cakes. And then now she does like handmade soap. So like, she's a creative herself. Wow. But for some reason, like growing up, I never put two and two together. Like, oh, she's a creative person. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think it. Because she's yeah. your mom. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, it was just like, oh, that's my mom. And then we would take trips. Like, we took a trip to Rhode Island once, and I just remember like being so upset because I was like, I don't want to go to Rhode Island. Like, what's over there? Mm-hmm. And like, like I want to stay home and play games and hang out with my friends and things, you know. And I was just like, like a brat about it. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. and then I think as I was, I was thinking about that moment, like. A couple months ago and I realized like oh shoot like my mom was doing something like like she was taking a risk and doing an art show like in a land that like like I I struggled to like like perform in front of people but like here she is like putting on a show with her her art and like everything that's in her heart for people that like she can't even necessarily like fully communicate with sure, right yeah and to me I was like dang like that I didn't even realize that was happening in the moment. But as I look back, I'm like, man, that's like a, like, I want that type of like boldness Uh, as I like, (laughs) as I like pursue like my art, you know? Yeah. So my mom was like, I'm a huge fan of you moving to a big city and I support you and I want you to like do it. And I think it would be good for you to struggle a little bit. Um, And then my dad, he's an accountant. So the first thing he said was, why would you leave a job that <laughs> pays so well and is so stable and like all this and that to to be in another city? And I heard him, you know, like I really understood what he was getting at because he wasn't saying, don't do your art, mm-hmm. don't pursue your dreams. What he was saying was like, why can't you stay here, be financially stable and still do your art? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think there's there's an aspect of like, really pursuing it that LA moving to LA had that I felt like I wouldn't get if I stayed in Georgia no I even agree. if I was yeah. doing more music yeah yeah so that's kind of how they felt but my dad came around to it yeah yeah I mean it's good to, <laughs> I mean I I think it speaks volumes that your parents were so supportive and yeah, I'm sure it yeah. made that transition a lot easier for you mm-hmm. um but I mean like do you generally do you have a good relationship with your parents in general I think it's very like I I want to talk to them more. Oh. Yeah. I as I've been away, I I've realized like, oh man, like there's just not much time. Mm. And I want to like I want to get to know them, but I know that as like second gen, you know, there's just a lot of like <clears throat> like barriers. Yeah. Whether that's like language or you know, my parents just not wanting to share more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. About like their feelings or their experiences and just like not knowing how to talk to them so it's yeah. like I think it that's where it is so it's like not bad but it's not like I'm best friends with my parents right right know? right yeah, yeah man adulting is so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting uh, yeah yeah uh, well, I don't want to keep you for too much longer, Kevin. I know that you are a busy man. Um, I could talk for days with I, you. But... <laughs> honestly, I could too. That's why I'm stopping this. Because I'm like, like, I could be here all night. Oh, um, but yeah, I mean, I usually ask all my guests, you know, mm. if they have any advice for people that are wanting to go into the industry that mm. I'm talking about. And for you, it's yeah. music and being an artist um yeah any advice for people that are like yeah, yeah like i want i want to be famous like no, <laughs> just kidding I'm just kidding i i want to be a singer songwriter i want to yeah. be an artist or any life advice at all yeah um i think as i look at where music is right now i think i've realized like it's very easy to to start it's easy to start. It's easy to get into. 
um, everything is so accessible. Like mm-hmm. you just buy a computer, get some gear, and you can start making music. Like yeah. Back then, you had to like rent out a studio and like pay money, and like you really had to have like the connections and the finances and things like that. But I think it's so accessible now. Um, so I think the first thing would be like don't be afraid to start and don't be afraid to try something mm-hmm. new because everyone starts bad. Like I I, th- I think that's what I love about my story. It's like I started bad. Like, I, I don't think I'm a person with, like, exceptional gifting of, like, you look at him and you, you see his beginning and you're, like, he's going to be, like, like, Chunje, you know? Like, mm. he's a musical genius and, like, all these things. Like, for me, like, I, it took years and years and years of just, like, battling with my own, like, insecurity and battling with my own, like, disbelief in myself, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, and just time of working at it. Um, so like don't be don't be afraid right Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think the third thing that I'm like telling myself is while it's easy it can get very daunting because now there are so many artists there's so many people wanting to do what you want to do and they're so good yeah and you feel like they're so much better (laughs) and and you realize like how am I going to stick out and how am I going to stand out Uh. right and I think that the advice I would give and this is the advice I give myself is like, don't compare. Mm-hmm. Like you can't compare because it's like, you, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to compare. Cause I feel like we're all different. We're all unique. And in reality, like, I feel like there's space for all, all of us, mm-hmm. a lot of us, you know, mm-hmm. you know, not everyone's going to be the next Beyonce or Ed Sheeran, but at the end of the day, if you're just truly wanting to find a way to express yourself and be mm-hmm. passionate about music, Mm-hmm. I think everyone can do it. Yeah. You know, um, I think if you want to be the most famous or whatever, like that's another story. But when it comes to building an avenue for you to be creative, I think it's available and accessible for all of us. Um, but yeah, so don't compare and just like do the best you can in mm-hmm. a sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. I, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, your advice number one, I, I just thought about a reel that I saw on Instagram and it Uh was like about an influencer but the whole reel was about like don't be afraid of the cringe like you know Mm -hmm. just like starting and it's like being cringy like oh like why are they doing that but Uh then it's like if you don't do it yeah what else are you missing out on you know right 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 um so I really love that and I love what you Mm -hmm. said too it's really sound advice I feel like for anyone that is just but it's always that fear factor, honestly. Mm-hmm. I think just putting yourself out there, especially, yeah. and I will say, I think it's more prevalent as an Asian American. Right? Yeah, like uh-huh. the the idea of we we need to hold or we grow up just like feeling like we need to be held to a certain standard, mm-hmm. but really we don't. And yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. You know, um, Kevin, what is what do you feel like has been your biggest like? obstacle in all of this do you yeah do you have any of those oh man i feel like so many uh right now it's just been like time and fatigue like it's you know i have to live so i have to work you know and then I, I think it's my first time really being in like oh a God, service. That's so sad. Wait, why? Well, no, 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 I mean, no, I have it's to like... live. So I have to work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yes, yes. Sorry, but, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. But it's just like, man, I'm doing a job that I, I, I enjoy. Like, I really enjoy coffee and, and things like that. But at, it's not my end game. Um, but at the end of it, I think I just, it's I'm so tired. Yeah. And like, I, it's so hard to like put myself in a place where like, oh, I need to like create something. You know, and it's like, ah, oh, I'm just so tired. I need rest and things like that. And and I think patience, like I'm learning patience because I'm like, I, I feel like I need to achieve something right now. Mm-hmm. But realizing like, oh, like how do I maintain a pace at a level that is sustainable throughout years? Because I think, <clears throat> I think that's the biggest mental like obstacle. Yeah. Like the the patience part, like just like one day at a time. You know, I, if that, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> no, no, it makes sense. Yeah. I think, especially in the fast-paced world that you live mm-hmm. in, it's like hard to be not want to be like 
catching yeah. up, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's good. Um, yeah. So I, man, I have so many questions. It's okay. <laughs> if you have more questions for Kevin, <laughs> just go DM him. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if he'll answer you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking because I DM'd Kevin to do this interview and it took him like four days to answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Um, but no, on a on a serious note, like um, if there is a young person here in Atlanta that's like, man, I, I want to know more. I want to know what he's doing. I want to know how he did it. Would you be cool with me connecting you with them? Yeah, no, for sure. Awesome. Always down. Always down for that. Awesome. Well, Kevin, thank you so much again for this conversation. Yes. Thank you for your honesty and transparency mm-hmm. through all of it. I learned a lot. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I'm really grateful to know mm-hmm. you, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. It was so much fun. Awesome. Well, guys, <laughs> thanks for listening. Um, if you have any questions, you can DM me on social media or you can email me at podcastwigu at gmail.com. I'll try to get you in touch with this famous person. <laughs> 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 Till the end. <laughs> Till next time, guys. Thanks. Bye. So tell me.